Hello and welcome to this video on getting sample size for your study. Sample size is an important element to any form of research. Especially when you are looking at human studies, this particular element is what will make or break your results. Sample size is the number you need to be able to infer what you find to what you're trying to investigate, and then extrapolate this to a wider population. There are three major sample sizes you should know about, and these relate to whether or not you want to be able to say your results have a confidence of 0 0.1, 0 0.05, or 0.01. That is, 10% of the variation is unexplained by your variable, 5% or 1%. 1% is the gold standard. 5% is an accepted standard. If you ever find a study relying on the 0.1, then you know something has gone terribly wrong and they are fishing for statistical significance. When you are trying to conduct a study, having too large or too small a sample size is a problem. Too large, and you are investing massive resources into a project. You could also be engaging in animal research and killing an unnecessary number of animals. Too small, and you are setting yourself up to be the victim of random circumstances and biases in your sample. This is overcome using a sample size calculation. Using this example from SurveyMonkey, you can see that by varying the population size, the confidence level, which is at 10, 5 or 1% measure, and your margin of error that you accept as deviation from that, you can then get an estimate of how many samples you will need, whether that is survey responses, research animals, or people involved in a study. Any of these things requires some sort of sample size to have meaning. This may not seem particularly helpful as for most people and especially researchers there is both a practical and resource upper limit of how much you can conduct. In this case finding 100 people willing to fill out a survey isn't necessarily easy. It certainly won't be done quickly and it will not be done cheaply. It's important though when you begin looking at things like population level studies. More than a few studies mentioned in recent videos have been entire countries or large parts of countries. This is an important way to look at it. Having an entire country as your sample population largely mitigates the issues that come from needing a specific sample size, as after a certain point, you begin to do away with the background noise and you are only detecting the most significant of peaks, these being the variables you are investigating. Of course, the outcomes as measured are only as good as the interpretation done. In this case, analysis can be done badly can be done incorrectly or the wrong methods applied, all of these would mitigate even the largest of sample sets verifiability and reliability. For this reason, just about every calculation available looks at the population size and the accuracy increases as this gets bigger. As your sample size gets bigger, your accuracy will increase. Your confidence level goes up as your value increases in population and sampling of that population. Put together, these three measures should decrease your margin of error. In theory, this increases the accuracy and the inference of the study to the wider population, creating a sort of circle. If you were trying to do this yourself, you would need to know the population size. For example, how many people live in your country? 
then you need your margin of error. Generally speaking, you're looking at about a plus or minus 5% margin of error. Then your confidence level. Your confidence level is one of those three variables given earlier, with 0.1 the worst and 0.01 the best. Then your standard deviation. Assuming 0.5 is fairly common practice, as it is more forgiving than most other values, and you've yet to conduct your test. Later on, after you have initial responses and some idea of the deviation, you can begin to refine this number. But, as an initial stage, 0.5 is an acceptable practice. You then plug your variables into this calculation. This will then come out with a number that you round up to a whole figure, and this becomes your sample size. As has been said, it is important to ensure that you have at least this many responses, participants, or samples. Any fewer, and you run the risk of underpowering your sample. Underpowered means you will not get reliable results, and it is one reason why at least population studies are the gold standard today. There is no way to more effectively study how many people are in a certain group. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting or useful, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions below.